Welcome to an introduction to critical thinking, understanding valid and invalid forms. This is meant to parallel the handout that we have for the introduction to philosophy class. And we won't be going over the entirety of the handout, but we will be focusing on some of the more difficult sections. And that is the valid and invalid forms, obviously. The first valid form that we're going to examine is the modus ponens. If A, then B. A, therefore B. And you can see that symbolically represented off to the left, and an example off to the right. If I have driven another 3,000 miles, then I will need an oil change. I have driven another 3,000 miles, therefore I need an oil change. Now, let's start by going ahead and examining the various components of the argument off to the right. Now, you can see the if and then, now highlighted in red, and also highlighted in red in the symbolic form. Since we have an if-then, we know that we need one of those sideways U symbols. Now, let's look to see if we can find an A. That should be very easy to find now that it is highlighted in red. I have driven another 3,000 miles. As we can see, that appears early as a premise and also appears again as a premise, so it is stated twice. And also B is stated twice. I will need an oil change. Now, uh, let's examine the modus tollens. If A, then B. Not B, therefore not A. Represented again symbolically on the left and an example on the right. If my sister wins the tournament, she will bring home a trophy. She did not bring home a trophy, therefore my sister did not win the tournament. Let's go ahead and look at the elements of this argument. We have an if. You will notice that we do not see a then in this argument. We don't see a then at all. And that is because in the English language, many times the then is implicit. If my sister brings home, if my sister wins a tournament, she will bring home a trophy. That sentence flows very naturally, and we know that the then is implied, even if it isn't explicit. So if, and my sister wins the tournament, seems like a very natural A for this argument. You'll notice that uh, later in the conclusion, my sister is highlighted in red, and when the tournament is highlighted in red. The reason for this is because the not isn't really a part of the conclusion. It is a separate element. It is a denial of the premise A. The premise A is, my sister wins the tournament. And in the conclusion, we have the denial of, my sister wins the tournament. And you will notice likewise for B, she will bring home a trophy. Uh, the did not is currently not highlighted in red because the she and bring home a trophy is part of the premise. The not isn't part of the premise. The not is a denial. When you have the denial of the premise, when you say not be, not she will bring home a trophy, is when you represent the not symbolically. So let's move this along and make it just a little bit trickier. What sort of argument is this off to the right? If money cannot buy happiness, then the richest people are not necessarily the happiest. Money cannot buy happiness. So, the richest people are not always the happiest. There are a lot of knots in here, but let's start simply and see if we can identify anything critical in this argument. The first thing that we notice is that there is an if-then statement. So let's go ahead and represent that symbolically off to the left. Now let's see if we can find a good premise A. And money cannot buy happiness. Seems like a pretty natural selection for the premise of A. Uh, money cannot buy happiness. So what is B? If A, then B. If money cannot buy happiness, then the richest people are not necessarily the happiest. Then we see a restatement of A. Money cannot buy happiness. And we see so. 
so takes the place of therefore in this argument. You will see a number of indicators in the English language what leads up to a therefore, or what equals a therefore. And so we have the so represented symbolically off to the left, in red, as a therefore symbol. And the final part of the conclusion, so the richest people are not always the happiest. So we have that represented symbolically there. Now, something that may have caught your attention is the nots. We have money cannot buy happiness. They're not necessarily. Money cannot buy happiness. They are not always the happiest. Why aren't these represented symbolically, I hear you cry? Well, the answer to that is very simple. The reason for it is because the not isn't a denial of the premise. The not in this sentence functions as a part of the premise. The premise is money cannot buy happiness. So if we said money can buy happiness, then we would say not A. That makes this a modus ponens. Let's get on to another uh, valid form, the hypothetical syllogism. If A, then B. If B, then C. So, or therefore, if A, then C. Again, represented symbolically off the left. And we'll take a look at this example. The A's are pretty clear. If I give you a ride home, and later in, in the conclusion, I will give you a ride home. Since we see something represented twice, make sure you have that noted. B. I will need to buy gas. If I give you a ride home, I will need to buy gas. Let's assume that is true, and we move on to the second set of premises. If I buy gas, I will need to get money out of the bank. So we see that represented uh, in, the, in one of the premises and in the conclusion, making this easily identifiable as a hypothetical syllogism. Thank you for joining me for the first of these screencasts on an introduction to critical thinking, and I hope this helps.